Hey YouTube, I am De Crane, and today I'm role-playing as the Warrior of Light. Do you see the resemblance? Anyway, in this video we're going to be talking about the future of Final Fantasy XIV. Now, a while back, Yoshida recently stated that the level cap will be increased to level 100, which is sort of a milestone for us. He also raises a few concerns and questions. What are we going to do for 8.0 and onward? Are we just going to go to 110, 120, eventually 150? Or are we going to reset from level 50? So let's watch the rest of that segment. That said, we also have to start looking into what should we do for 8.0 and do we raise it just another 10 levels, 20 levels, 50 levels? Or do we just reset everything and go back to 50? <laughs> now, although both methods are possible, reducing everything to 50 is highly improbable. This is because when they implement the system, to reduce everything to 50, even Dawn Trail will be level 50 until 8.0, we will finally be level 60. This raises a few concerns for sinking duties. Is every expansion, Heavensward, Stormblood, Shadowbringers, Endwalker, even Dawn Trail going to be synced to level 50? And if so, how many buttons will we get if we were to sink those duties? Sinking right now let's say a realm reborn extreme trials or something uh, coils of bahamut if you sink those duties there are not a lot of buttons for you to press and that's very disappointing and if that's going to happen for 8.0 then i don't want to reduce everything to level 50. now let's talk about what would happen if they were to continue to increase the level cap by 10 levels each expansion. This is already becoming a problem. We're running out of space on our hotbars. And what I mean by that is the amount of keys on our hotbars, for me at least, is 28. Because I can reach the keys 1 through 7, and then I have two modifiers to switch between hotbars. Alt and Shift. Control is another modifier that I use, but since it's out of reach and uncomfortable to press, I use Control to switch between jobs. And if I do that during battle, well, of course, it's gonna give me an error because you can't switch jobs during battle. So I use Shift and Alt primarily and the normal one through seven keys. Now, if they keep adding new skills, I'm gonna have to click my abilities. To be honest, I'm already clicking some abilities like Faint and Addle and my tank defensives. As we've seen from the media tour, they're already mitigating this button bloat by changing keys into other keys that you're gonna press anyway. And I believe you have the option now to make one, two, three combo, just one button. And this is a very good decision by them. The change PVE buttons to be similar to PVP is a very good idea to reduce the amount of keys on your hotbars to add more new spells and abilities. These are my current hotbars for every single job. I'll give you a minute to look at them. And your minute's up. Hopefully you pause the video to give yourself that minute, but we're moving on. And they could go even further by adding a stance option. And this stance system will be always active. You'll either be in single target stance or AOE stance. And what I mean by that is every time you press an attack button, it will either do single target damage or AOE damage. Hybrid skills such as Foul will no longer need to be the way that they are. They'll either be like Blizzard 3 
or high pleasure 2 doing single target damage or AoE damage to a group of mobs. Now, after they add this dance, even more abilities will be taken off the hotbar for them to add new abilities. Using Black Mage as an example, this is my current layout. And then these two will be the layout if this system is implemented. On the left is single target stance layout and on the right is AOE stance layout. As you can see, six whole slots were freed from the hotbars. But of course one of them will be used to put the stance change button. However, one button is a small price to pay. Having five free slots for them to add new abilities in future expansions would be very beneficial. One slot for each expansion. So the five new expansions coming out would work its magic. Now, of course, there's pros and cons to every system. And we've already talked about one of the pros that this system would bring, which is freeing ease of the hot players. A second pro, in my opinion, it could be neutral, but two is that single target rotation will be the same as AOE rotation. Let's put that together. be the exact same so you know when you're running a dungeon you're doing aoe stuff and then you're you have like weird resources you're using buffs that don't really come up when you're at the boss so you can't do your single target rotation efficiently it'll just make everything the same now one of the cons of the system is that people uh, people may forget what stance they're in. They may forget at the beginning, but I'm pretty sure in time it will be resolved. So two, uh, a way to fix this, I guess not really two then, It'd be more like a, a a fix for this would be uh, have stance on party list so other people can see what stance you're currently on currently in and then they can tell you to switch stances or you know something like that another pro to this system is that every single target dot will now have its aoe equivalent so you can now mass spread the dot with just one button dia or higanbana what's gonna happen eventually is that between every single gcd you press there will be two OGCDs. Eventually, the path that we're going to take if we keep increasing the level cap by 10 every expansion. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you like this video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. In my next series of videos, I will be doing the job rotations pre Dawn Trail to compare them once Dawn Trail releases. Peace.